Hey, what's going on guys? So today I'm going to show you how to create a day and night cycle inside Unity using the Unity Universal Render Pipeline for 2D lighting. Uh, very easy system to create. Um, it's actually accomplishable in less than 50 lines of code and I'm going to show you how. So first what you want to do is go to your scripts folder if you have one, uh, not a big deal. Uh, create C sharp script and we're going to call this day and night cycle. Now, go ahead, open that up. I'm using Rider. You're probably using either Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio, doesn't really matter. But go up here to the top. We're gonna open this up so we can see all the little sub modules that we're using. And if you have the Universal Render Pipeline already set up, then you're gonna do using Unity Engine dot experimental dot, uh, let me see, dot rendering dot universal and you do want to add a semicolon to that at the end. Now, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of all this. We will still need an update method, but I just like, you know, not having any clutter whenever I begin coding my uh, mono behavior. So, this is gonna work with a gradient. What we're gonna be doing is as time goes on in our update method, we're gonna change the color of the light to a color from our gradient. So, I'm gonna go ahead, set up a private gradient um, I did serialize field, so that way, whenever you add this script to an object, you can still see that uh, gradient and mess with it inside the inspector, even though it's private. So just a way to kind of keep it encapsulated so other scripts don't end up messing with it, that kind of thing. Definitely a good practice to have while still being able to edit and rearrange things inside the inspector. So we're also going to need to reference our light. I'm just going to do a game object. You could probably refer to it as a light 2D. It doesn't really matter. Um, using the get component method, apparently, according to Ryder, is kind of expensive. So by all means, you can definitely do light 2D. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to do game object. Now we are going to have a integer I'll just call that days. And we are gonna have a public kind of way to get that variable. So all this is, this is a getter method. So typically it would look something like public int get is like return days. So that's kind of the longer way of writing that, I believe, but I'm just gonna do it this way because it's short, it's one line using a anonymous method, which is what the equal side arrow thing is. Um, we're gonna have another private variable called time. I'm gonna set this to 50. Um, you'll see why here in a minute. Uh, we're gonna also need a bool value called can change day. This is the way that I do it in my game, which I'll have a devlog linked down in the description below if you wanna watch that. There's probably an easier way to track when to change the day, but in this case, uh, this is how I end up doing it. Uh, public delegate void day changed. So the reason why I have a delegate void is say that, in, like in my game, there is farming. So sometimes you want um, your crops to grow at the end of a day or in the middle of the night, whatever. So you can take the grow method from that crop and then end up adding it to this delegate. You're gonna to want to now add in your update method. So go ahead, write your update. And what we're gonna do is check if time is greater than 500. Um, you could probably set your cycle to be longer, but this is how I have it set up in my script. So, you know, definitely feel free to tinker around, kind of get a feel for how this system works. Uh, and then we're gonna have a if int time equals 250 and we can change the day. So the reason why we do it this way is float values uh, or decimals. So checking if a flow is going to be equal to a whole number without a decimal value isn't really going to happen. And we also have the can change day variable because 
when time, like as time goes on, we're going to add to that variable. So we'll add to that variable using time dot delta time. So it's going to stay 250 longer than a frame. So update is called every frame. So because of that, we want to have this variable to prevent the day ticker from increasing multiple times before time can actually increase again. Um, hopefully that made sense. But go ahead, uh, set the variable to false. That way it won't change after this. Go ahead, call the delegate. So any methods that are tied to the delegate will be called. Now, if you don't really care about this, you just want a day and night cycle, you can go ahead and remove uh, line 19, 21, and then 33, which I just wrote. So this one, and then these two lines. Go ahead and then um, you want to increment your day's value. So you're adding a day. Now, with how the gradient set up, this will likely happen um, in the middle of the night, which, you know, you could always change at what time the day is then uh, incremented or, you know, what is considered nighttime inside the gradient, which I'll show you guys here in a second. Um, then we want to check time is equal to 255. You could probably do 251 or whatever. It doesn't really make a difference. This is just how I wrote it. Um, we actually don't need to do this because it's just one line. So uh, can change day equals true. Then we're going to want to do time dot delta time. So delta time is the time that it takes to complete a frame. So depending on your game's frame rate, if you're to just do like uh, time plus equals one or whatever, or z 0 0.001, that's going to have a different, it, time will go by faster depending on your game's frame rate. So when we tie the value to the frame rate, it'll be the same amount of time, no matter what computer's running it, no matter what frame rate. Hopefully that made sense. It's kind of confusing uh, the way I worded it, but I think you will probably get the idea. So we're gonna go ahead and take our light game object, get the light component on it, set color equals light color dot evaluate. So what evaluate does is it will pick a color from the gradient based off of a value between zero and one. So we're gonna take time and then multiply that by 0 0.002F. Uh, I don't entirely remember how I got to that variable exactly, but you know, as you tinker around with the system, kind of manipulate it on your own, then you'll probably get a better idea of how that works. But that is it for the scripting portion of this. So now we can actually go back to Unity and find our light, which my project is a global light 2D. Go ahead, add in day and night cycle, which is the script that we just wrote. Um, we're gonna pull this, oh, oops. Pull the game object to here. And then now we have our gradient. So for the way that we're gonna do this, uh, we're gonna need a more kind of orangish color on both ends. So this will be our daytime color. Location 50. And then this will be our nighttime color. And so at 30, and then I believe that's supposed to be it. 70, 75, something like that. We're gonna need to have more of a kind of darker orange color to signify uh, sunset and sunrise. So there's that. Now we can even have, oops, 40, take this, just so night is a bit more longer. Five or I guess that would be 60. Now, so at zero, which will be right here, that's gonna be daytime and then at 100, which inside the evaluate method would be one, is also gonna be daytime. So because our time is set, so if we go up here and you do debug, we can actually see the private variables even though they're not visible. 
So we see our days, can change time, or can change day and then time. So go ahead and click play. Go ahead, set that back to normal. And whenever we click this, you'll see that the hexadecimal value for the color is changing, which means that it is working, that the day and night cycle is moving. And so yeah, thanks for watching. Make sure you give this video a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.